Hello everyone, how are you doing? My name is Ryan Kelly and I'm going to be hosting another episode of Know Your Bosses. Know Your Bosses, if you're not aware, is a show where I'll review some of the most classic bosses to the lesser known ones. I'll rank them based on their difficulty, creativity, appearance, and fighting style. In the end, the boss will get a ranking from 1, avoid the fight, to 10, pursue the fight. So now that I've quickly gone over the rules, we can talk about the boss we'll be fighting today. Today I'm going to be discussing... Location. Double jump locations are different based on what game you're playing in and or what rank you're fighting it in. Since double jump can appear in a bunch of different maps in a bunch of different games, I'm just going to say every map and what type of missions it can appear on. Double jump can be found in the forest and hills, jungle, swamp, snowy mountains, volcano, deserted island, flooded forest, tundra, sandy plains, volcano third, misty peaks, ancestral steps, Sunken Hollow, Volcanic Hollow, Frozen Seaway, Heavenly Mount, oh my god, there's so many freaking locations, Primal Forest, Everwoods, Dunes, Jurassic Frontier, Verdant and Hills, Arctic Ridge, Marshlands, Ruined Ridge, and Fortress Ruins. As you can see, the Double Joe can appear on many different maps. It can also appear on a lot of quests like Harvest Tours, Gathering Quests, Quests where you just kill or capture a monster, Quests with other monsters, and it can also be summoned by other monsters, which I'll get into later. Boss information. As you all know, Dojo has been in a lot of different games, being Monster Hunter 3, Monster Hunter Portable 3rd, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, Monster Hunter 4, Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, and Monster Hunter Generations. But its first debut was in Monster Hunter 3, where it appeared randomly in a high rank quest where you have to kill 10 Jagias. Dojo is known for appearing in random quests throughout early, high, and G rank. So if you're just entering higher G rank, then you better be prepared to run if it appears on the quest you're in, because I promise you, you'll not be able to win that fight. Yeah, Delojo is threatening, but it's not nearly as threatening as its variant that was introduced in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, Savage Devil Joe, or as many people call it, Savage Joe. This version of Devil Joe is always in its rage mode, and has an even stronger enraged state, and it will always be able to use its dragon breath, which I'll get into later. Now, most people think that Devil Joe only has one other relative, but this isn't true. It actually has five relatives being Savage Joe, Four Heavenly King Devil Joe, Aberrant Devil Joe, Abayarugo, and Gaiorugo. Out of these Devil Joe relatives, Aberrant Devil Joe is the most interesting one to me because it doesn't have skin. Now, not much is known about this variant, but we do know that it was inspired by Colossal Titan from the anime Attack on Titans. Speaking of Japanese stuff, the Devil Joe's name in Japanese is Aiburuo, which when I tried to Google Translate this, it told me that this meant evil location, which kind of makes sense because it's a nomadic monster that goes from place to place, and it's evil, 
So, I guess it kind of makes sense? While we're on the topic of Delojo being a nomadic monster, let's talk about why it's a nomadic monster. This excerpt from Hunter's Encyclopedia 3 explains why the Devil Joe is the way that it is. A huge brute wavered species that constantly wanders from one area to another, looking for prey. There are features and characteristics that give Devil Joe a very brute character, and also because of these traits, the Al the Alus, the Alias, the Al Alus, oh my god, why can I not say that? Alus, the, the Alias, Alice. no, not Alus, okay, mm, I hate to do this. Okay, hold on. Hold on, I got. I just gotta call someone. Just gotta, gotta call someone. Hey. hey, Joe. Um, I'm having some trouble. I'm trying to record some audio right now, and there's a word that I'm having a little bit of trouble with. Um, could you help me out? Uh, it depends on the word. Um, it's spelled like this. It's A L I A S. Alias. Alias. I knew it. I couldn't say it. <laughs> Alias. The alias Fear Dragon was given to it. It was also reported that it can prey the creatures around the region to extinction because of its high metabolism and body heat. Dojo is in a constant search for a food source, leading it to live a nomadic lifestyle. It can live to almost every ecosystem, from the hellish volcano to the frozen tundra. There you go! Now you don't have to wonder why the Devil Joe keeps returning in future Monster Hunter games. It's because it's a nomadic monster that just needs to keep on moving on to different locations. Doi. That was horrible, don't fucking use that. Strategy! Before we get into the fight with Devil Joe, let's talk about some things that you should have with you. Well, for starters, Devil Joe constantly gets hungry, so he'll be making a lot of trips to eat. So what you should do is to feed it meat. Now you might be thinking, why would you feed the Devil Joe meat? Well, there are special types of meat that can give the Devil Joe certain status effects. There are three types of meat that you can bring with you, being poison meat, a meat that poisons monsters, tainted meat, a meat that paralyzes monsters, and drugged meat, a meat that makes monsters go to sleep. The next thing that you should bring with you is null berries. Whenever a monster could give elemental damage, I always recommend that you bring null berries. Another thing that I recommend that you bring are bombs. This will help you if you're trying to do a sleep run or if you have drugged meat with you. And the final thing that I would say that you should bring are traps. The Devil Joe can get stuck in both shock and pitfall traps. So I would recommend that you bring both types of traps and then bring supplies to make each type of trap so that you can have double the number of traps. Also, keep in mind that the Devil Joe is weak to Dragon and Thunder, so bringing weapons that have these elements will do more damage. Devil Joe is particularly weak to Dragon, so I would personally recommend that you bring a Dragon weapon over a Thunder weapon. I believe that should cover all the things that you should bring with you to this fight. Now let's actually talk about the fight itself. The Devil Joe doesn't actually have a whole lot of attacks, but the attacks that it does have hit pretty hard. It's able to swing its tail, stomp its foot down, throw rocks at you that have different elements depending on where you're fighting it, headbutt you, jump on you, hit you with the fence down, and the coup de grace use dragon breath that gives you dragon blight. Now the attacks that rely on brute force are pretty easy to read and avoid. Since the Double Joe is a slower monster, you'll quickly learn when it's going to slam its foot on the ground or when it's going to throw rocks at you. The attacks that are a little harder to read are its rage mode attacks. Yes, the Devil Joe has a rage mode just like every other monster. Now, what makes the Devil Joe's rage mode more unique from other monsters is the fact that you can literally see its rage when it gets mad. In its rage mode, its skin glows red and is more aggressive and can use some new moves that it can't use outside of its rage mode. The unique attack that Devil Joe uses in its rage mode is its Dragon Breath. This is by far the most deadly attack that the Devil Joe has. This attack hits hard and it has a lot of range, especially when you're fighting Savage Joe. Of course, if you get hit by this Dragon Breath, you'll get inflicted with Dragon Blight, which will take away your weapon's element. So as you can see, getting hit with Dragon Blight can really screw you over if you're trying to get elemental damage on the Devil Joe. Now that we've covered all of its attacks, let's talk about the best way to handle the Devil Joe. Fight the Devil Joe carefully whenever it has energy. Make sure to try to cut the Devil Joe's tail off if you're able to, because it'll make the fight with the Devil Joe a lot easier because it'll lose some of its range. And make sure to put down some meat in the room when you're fighting Devil Joe. I would recommend that you place one of each type of meat on the ground. Once you've done that, all you have to do is wait for the Devil Joe to get hungry. Once it does get hungry, then it should try to eat one of the meats that you put on the ground. If it eats a drug meat, then what you should do is place bombs around its head and a trap to the right and to the left of it, then get someone who has a hard hitting weapon to hit it in the head. Once you do this, it will take a lot of damage and then it will immediately fall into a trap. So if you do everything I said to do, the Devil Joe should be dead pretty quickly, especially if you have four people with you.
Rewards! After defeating Devil Joe, you'll be able to get its weapons and armor as well as some important items. Devil Joe's weapons have a good amount of dragon element and can still hit pretty hard. I wouldn't say that they are the best dragon weapons that you can make, I would say that they're pretty good if you want a dragon weapon that has a good balance of elemental and raw damage. However, the sharpness of the weapons aren't too good. It has a little purple and white sharpness and a good amount of blue and green sharpness. The weapons that you can make from Devil Joe are Hammer, Greatsword, Lance, Longsword, Dual Blade, Switch Axe, Gun Lance, Bite Bow Gun, and Heavy Bow Gun. As for the armor, it's pretty good if you're using a heavier weapon that has some horrible sharpness. Now the abilities that I'm about to list off from this armor set come from the G-Rank armor from Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. The Blade Master has the abilities Attack Up Large, Speed Eating Plus 2, Razor Sharp, and Raise Hunger. And the Gunner armor has the abilities Attack Up Medium, Auto Tracker, Load Up, and Raise Hunger. And probably the best thing that you can get from killing a Devil Joe is the Power and Armor Talon. These are charms that increase your attack power and your armor's defense. So you can see how these charms are pretty important because more power and more defense is always a good thing, especially when it comes to Monster Hunter. Final thoughts. In this section of the video, I'll be talking about how the gameplay, design, difficulty, fun factor, and creativity weigh in on my opinion on whether I think a boss is good or not. Anyway, now that I've gotten that out of the way, let's start this section. The Dojo is a monster that is meant to bring fear to people. Especially people who are new to the series. You just got to high rank and you go on a gathering quest, just minding your own business, and then all of a sudden, this huge green pickle comes charging towards you. You freak out and you try to fight it, but it won't go well. It will kill you almost instantly, and it's supposed to be able to do this. Capcom did this on purpose because they wanted to add a threat that you would have to become strong enough to take down on your own. You work hard to become strong enough to take it down by killing a lot of other weaker monsters. This is why the Devil Joe fight stands out so much compared to a lot of the other monsters. Now, I'm not saying that the Devil Joe is the only monster that does this, I'm saying that whenever Capcom creates this relationship with you and a monster, it is always a special experience. The fight with Devil Joe is pretty fun, especially if it's your first time fighting it. I remember that moment whenever I killed the Devil Joe for the first time. It felt so great to finally take down the monster that's been sabotaging all of my high rank quests. As for the fight itself, it is really intense. It has a lot of range and can hit pretty hard, which is a deadly combination. After a while though, the fight with Devil Joe becomes a little bit repetitious, because for the most part, the Devil Joe acts the same way. It swings its tail, stomps on the ground, gets mad, and then breathes Dragon Blight. Now I know that the Devil Joe is a Brute Wavering, so its method of fighting is a little more simple than other monsters, but Brute Monsters can still be diverse with the way that it fights. Now I'm not saying the fight with the Devil Joe is bad by any means, I am saying that it doesn't really change as much as some of the other monsters fights do. Although the fight with the Devil Joe might not be my favorite, its appearance is by far one of my favorite ones in the series. I mean, just look at it! It's a fucking pickle monster! I don't think it gets much better than that. All jokes aside, I really do like the Devil Joe's appearance. It definitely stands out compared to most of the monsters in the series. It just looks so intimidating and barbaric. You can see the scars on its back from previous fights that it was in with other monsters and hunters. And you know whenever you lock eyes with this monster that you're gonna be in for a difficult and long fight. The fight with Devil Joe is hard and fun, but it's pretty repetitive. Its appearance is very unique, and the concept of running other monsters just to take down this one monster that's been giving you hell is super creative. So, with all that in mind, my score for the Devil Joe is... A 7 out of 10. So, what do you think about this boss? Do you think this boss deserves a higher or lower ranking? Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video or not. Also, make sure to click the like button if you liked the video, and hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching, my name is Ryan Kelly, and I will see you in the next episode of Know Your Bosses.